Hello everyone, I Apple Guy Kingsley here, also known as Character King, and as some people refer to me, the Fat Hag and Drag. Hey, what's going on? Uh, welcome to 15 Minutes, like I said. <clears throat> this is a new sort of a show for me because I'm going to utilize the benefits of working out and combine it with making videos. How is that for cool? <laughs> uh, the fortunate thing for me is that I have an awesome elliptical with a stand pre-built on it for music or an iPhone or an iPod. So I can film myself and work out at the same time. <laughs> so I decided, you know, maybe I should make benefit of this opportunity. Maybe there are some people who want to work out and just shoot the breeze about topics in the news or whatever comes to mind. And maybe you could get on your elliptical or bike or who knows whatever else, and just go at it for 15 minutes and watch me ramble on, and if you want to make a response video to it, feel free to do that. It's just something to occupy you, because I think a lot of people get distracted, or um, let's say <clears throat> pay too much attention when they're working out. They pay attention to the time, and they think it's never going to end, and <laughs> they're just going to keep going and going, and they pay too close attention to the clock sometimes. So I thought, for me, something that would be cool is to have something that <clears throat> keeps my mind occupied and doing something while I'm exercising. Thus, 15 minutes. <laughs> so I do little 15 minute intervals throughout the day on my elliptical, and I decided I would do that with the conversation from things I've saw, seen in the news, or heard in the news, or read in the news or whatever. So, a couple of things that come to my mind for today. Number one is uh, a lot of uh, famous actresses, believe it or not, have been passing away recently. Uh, not sure if you heard about Gene Stapleton passing away last week. Uh, I know it's a little old of a news subject, um, but she was one of my favorite actresses from... You know, when I was a really young kid, and I used to see All in the Family and reruns, and uh, great actress, and one of the things that's great about Jean Stapleton is she didn't have a lot of drama behind her. You know, she had a career, uh, worked in New York in the theater, worked in television, worked in movies, worked with, obviously, Carol O'Connor, uh, was directed by Nora Ephron, worked with Meg Ryan, Worked with Tom Hanks. I mean, just worked with a lot of actors before John Travolta. But at the end of the day, <sighs> while she was very well known back in her days as Edith Bunker, she didn't become one of those people who was just like a media frenzy, you know? She was, you know, a decent enough, you know, middle aged to uh, older woman. And she went, did her job, made people laugh. Uh, and then went home, performed theater, and just had a really nice, quiet life. She didn't die of drug overdose, she didn't die of heart issues, she died at 90 years old of natural causes, which is, you know, most likely things like, you know, cardiac arrest, basically. <clears throat> so, I think that's really nice to hear. And then there's Esther Williams. Esther Williams, why you have a lot? That's a line from Pretty Woman. <laughs> Part of my 15 minutes sometimes is listening to, uh, or watching, rather, um, Pretty Woman. So, that's from Pretty Woman. Uh, but uh, Esther Williams passed away recently, and uh, she died at an old age. Uh, you know, you look back, and a lot of actors from, you know, the golden age of Hollywood, or pre-golden age, or whatever, don't die of these same sort of, you know tragic circumstances. They don't die of you know, overdoses or uh, kidney failure or things like that because of abuse of their bodies. They die, you know, sort of quiet, natural lives, and sometimes a lot longer than most of the, na of the, the younger generation. I mean, River Phoenix died so young, Corey Haim, you know, there's just so many you can mention. <laughs> and of course the ones who are you know, have died recently are escaping my memory, but that's okay. Um, 
their lives are nonetheless tragic that they died. Their talent was outstanding, and they were just gone in the wind so quickly. Uh, but I think those two people are an example, as well as other people who just, Paul Newman, people who led a long, successful life in the industry and didn't die surrounded by a tragedy. They simply had their run and lived to a very old age. 90 years old is huge. <laughs> uh, in Hollywood standards, that's, that's almost like Gloria Stewart. You know what I mean? She turned 100, I think, before she passed on. So it's a great thing to see. I like that. Uh, one of the things jumping completely off the spectrum of entertainment into uh, scary <laughs> is that there's a big, a big thing going on right now in the news about how uh, the NSA has been uh, monitoring emails, you know, social media for people in the country. Um, wiretapping, you know, listening to your conversations. I mean, the whole thing. And I'm a little saddened that we're not more outraged by this as, as a nation. I mean, excuse me, the truth be told, we should be really angry and not allowing politicians to get away with this sort of thing. And I know a lot of people say, what's for our safety? Well, if these efforts were at all successful, we would have stopped a lot of the terrorism that has been occurring in the last year. Or, you know, seven years, or what is it, 12 years since 9-11 occurred. The bottom line is we have not stopped that much terrorism, and if we have, we sure as heck haven't heard a ton of things about how they've stopped terrorism. We've heard more about the terrorism uh, plots that have been successful than the ones that have been thwarted. So... This policy of monitoring your phone calls and uh, investigating social media is really just a power game. It really is. And people think that you're a conspiracy theorist if you're against it and think you have something to hide. It's not the case. The reality is that the more power and control you give government, the more they'll take because it just takes a little bit at a time for power to become ultimate and for you to lose your rights. Today it may be they're listening to your phone calls. Tomorrow they may outlaw certain kinds of communication. Certain things you say. They may outlaw sexting, for example. And I don't personally, you know, spend a lot of time thinking about that. But you don't want your government to control what you can and cannot do. There are always going to be people who do things outside of the limits of um, acceptable morality and ethics. That's just going to happen. But the more power you give to government to prevent that, the more the decent people are going to lose ground. Because like I said, the more power you give government, the more they'll take. Slowly, but certainly. I don't care for Republicans, I don't care for Democrats. I know they were doing the whole gun law thing recently. And while violence is horrible to have happen to people, the right to bear arms is an amendment that we need to take very, very seriously. Yes, there need to be more methods for investigating people and deciding if they are worthy of, you know, owning a gun. I do think your environment should be considered. If you live in a, I'm not talking about your neighborhood, but if you live in an environment where you're, you have children who are um, known to have, you know, psychological issues that may suggest violence, then you're probably not someone who needs to have a gun in your home, purely because of the fact not because you're irresponsible, and not even because they're irresponsible, but because they do not know how to control that urge or behavior. And if they're on medication, they've been 
successful, or you're a person with a medication, and you've been successful for a long period of time, maybe that's something different to consider, but from a general perspective, if you have a consistent pattern of psychological challenges, you probably should not be someone in possession of a gun, because your ability to use good judgment is impaired by your issues. That's a small portion of society, though. We shouldn't be limiting the, the mass of, pe of people, <laughs> a little out of breath, from having firearms or weapons to defend their home because they feel they have the right to have them because of unfortunate and tragic instances where people who have poor judgment and homicidal or suicidal tendencies take action uh, in the world. So I'm not against um, more firearm control. I think we as a society, just like with firearms, with government, need to harness the excess of power. And I've talked a lot about this, this sort of sways into another su subject, but media, the mainstream media is very dangerous. I'm not saying we need to limit media. I think we as people need to stop putting so much value in a lot of the mainstream stories that we hear. The scare tactics about shootings, things like that. You gotta remember those are rare instances. For those one or two people, you know, at a time that do violent things, there are billions of people who are not doing anything. So we're not even talking one millionth of a percent. We're talking about a very infinitesimal, tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of people that hurt other people. The bulk of the population, as I have said, as I have said before, in Facebook or something, I believe they're good people. But it's the people in power who have underlying plans and want certain things that create media, that create this swarm of stories designed to scare people. Say, well, we better get gun control because more of this is going to happen. Look around at what's, how much has it really happened. It would be different if you heard about every pe person on a block was doing it. A whole community was doing it. It's not that case. It doesn't happen that often. It's, I know it sounds like I'm making it inconsequential, but it's, it's a very small amount. Yes, it's horrible. Yes, it's wrong. But it happens. But you can't use it to control the dominant portion of the population because of a small group of unfortunately disturbed people. Um, so feel free to leave your comments about that below. I'm sure I got some people who will be very pissed off and call me the fat hag and drag or the stupid white boy or <laughs> whatever you want to call me. And that's fine. I don't mind. You have, a you have a right to a different opinion. As a matter of fact, I welcome your opinion. It starts conversation. If you disagree with me, tell me why you disagree with me. I've told you why I disagree. With more gun control and with more government power and observation of our personal lives. I've told you. Tell me why you think that that should happen. And use good reason. You know, Use good examples of why that should happen because... I want the world, or this country we live in, to stay as free as possible. I don't go along with what people say about us living in a democracy, because it's easy to know, and easy to listen to, if you've ever done the Pledge of Allegiance, prior to it being sort of removed from the school system, that we are in a republic, not a democracy. And as long as the Electoral College and not the popular vote elects high-ranking officials 
i.e. the president, then we will never be a complete democracy. We'll always be a republic. A vote should be a vote. And there's my alarm telling me that we are at our 15 minutes. <sighs> Thanks for spending the time with me. And now you know what time it is here. <laughs> Thanks so much for spending the time with me. Feel free to do um, your own uh, video response or leave a comment below. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching 15 Minutes. Take it easy.